our first speaker dr anm esanun korim sir shohit jeur roman medical college uh, our first speaker uh, sir uh, is working as associate professor bismillahir rahmanir rahim assalamu alaikum very good afternoon ami prothome dhonnobad janacchi ayojokder amake ei session e kichu bolar jonne kichu share korar jonne ami prothome ei janacchi je ये विजय मासे स्वाधीनता मुक्त युद्धे शहीद दानकारी सकल के सर्वप्रथम श्रद्धा जाना जतर जनक बंगबंधु शेख मुजिबुर रहमान के मुक्तिजुद्धे शहीद स्थिति आत्मदानकारी सकल स्टार्टिंग माइ टपिक इज मैनेजमेंट अब नेफ्रैक्टरि रिफ्रैक्टर नेफ्रोटिक सिनोम इन डायबिटिस मेलाइट डायबिटिस इज द लीडिंग कज अब एन स्टेज रेनल डिजीज इन डेवलप कान्ट्रीज बीसाइड्स In developing countries, diabetic kidney disease is also increasing. Additionally, severely increased albuminuria or massive proteinuria and renal insufficiency are frequent accompaniment of diabetic nephropathy. However, a second disease superimposed on diabetic nephropathy uh, of concern, especially if the proteinuria is massive or renal failure is deemed to be acute onset. Now. terminology diabetic nephropathy historically defined as the clinical presence of albuminuria accompanied by retinopathy in presence with type 1 diabetes and the presence of albuminuria was considered to be an early signs of classical diabetic glomerulopathy which is characterized pathologically by glomerular basement thickening endothelial damage mesenchymal expansion and nodules and podocyte loss but in terms of diabetic kidney disease it is a clinical diagnosis based upon the presence of albuminuria decrease gfr egfr estimated gfr or both uh, in patient in with diabetes but it is not intended to indicate a specific kidney disease phenotype in patients with diabetes rather various forms of kidney disease attributable to diabetes including non classical glomerular lesions and also the tubular interstitial disease these are the uh, pathology of diabetic glomerulopathy that is a diffuse uh, capillary basement thickening and also podocyte effacement and also the mesenchymal expansion and histologically that is uh, development of the nodules and loss of architecture of the glomerulus what are the risk factor leads to the uh, the development of the nephropathy uncontrolled diabetes mellitus for long standing high hb1c high systolic blood pressure albuminuria grade severe the albuminuria and chance of progression of the renal disease is more decrease baseline gfr duration of the diabetes and other microvascular complications like retinopathy peripheral and autonomic neuropathy family history also important for development of the diabetic nephropathy we know there are metabolic factors and hemodynamic factors all are the causes activation of the intracellular signaling pathway oxidative stress and other uh, pathways including causing inflammation fibrosis and ultimately development of the diabetic kidney disease these are the conceptual model of the natural history hyperglycemia and cellular injury starts with microalbuminuria and macroalbuminuria GFR initially normal low and ultimately GFR is decreased and hypertension as we know the severity of the albuminuria associated with severity of the hypertension massive albuminuria associated with severe hypertension and also progresses uh, with cardiovascular complications this showing that is albuminuria excess al glomerular albumin leak what is the fate of the albumin this albumin ultimately uh, reabsorbed in the renal tubules and the tubular leakage tubular transcytosis and also the uptake of filtered albumin this albumin is accumulation causing inflammation and ultimately the tubular interstitial disease and then tubular reabsorption of the albumin also hampered and so the albuminuria in later stage of the diabetic kidney disease albuminuria is more and more this slide shows that is glomerular damage and tubular damage leads to the microalbuminuria and initial phase of the hyperglycemia 
leads to the increase glucose load to the proximal convoluted tubule and leads to the descending loop of the loop of Henle. And this there is increased absorption of the glucose and sodium and chloride. Sodium glucose co-transport too that is upregulated. This upregulation is causing the changes and ultimately leads to so the more sodium and glucose absorption in the proximal tubule and decreased delivery of sodium to the distal tubules and ultimately macula densa is activated so afferent is vasodilated and efferent is vasoconstricted and development of the intraglomerular hypertension and this also leads to development of the more progression of diabetic kidney disease and leads to marked albuminuria now nephrotic syndrome as we know the nephrotic syndrome is defined by the presence of heavy proteinuria hyperalbuminuria peripheral edema hyperlipidemia and thrombotic disease and the term nephrotic syndrome is generally used for an immune related kidney disease with poor clinical outcome especially resistant to treatment with steroid or immunosuppressive for six months so the refractive nephrotic syndrome specially termed for immune related kidney disease not for diabetes mellitus but when the nephrotic syndrome in diabetic kidney disease or diabetic nephropathy is intractable sometimes it is termed as a refractory nephrotic syndrome in diabetes mellitus 30 percent of the adult patient with nephrotic syndrome having systemic disease the like diabetes amyloidosis SLE and remaining are due to primary renal disease that is a minimal chance disease FSGS and uh, membranous nephropathy nephrotic syndrome also can develop in other immune related disease that is immunoglobin A nephropathy post infection and memnoproliferative glomerular nephritis sometimes heavy protein occur in the absence of hypoalbuminemia or edema management type of this nephrotic range proteinuria or heavy albuminuria is same that of nephrotic syndrome. Uh, this, may, this may occur in diabetes mellitus or any other primary renal disease. Nowadays, albumin excretion is, uh, is the prime importance for development uh, for uh, classification of the severity of the diabetic renal disease. When ACL level is three, uh, three, uh, 30 to 300, it is called moderately increased albuminuria. When more than 300, it is called severely increased albuminuria. As the albuminuria is progress, that is uh, more time progress, the GFR is decreased and nephron mass is also reduced. This slide shows the GK uh, guideline according to the albuminuria and CK staging. So, today's topics are about the management of severe in increased albuminuria in diabetes mellitus. General measures applicable to all patients with diabetes mellitus, like all of the diabetic patients, although some specific considerations like lifestyle modifications, healthy diet physical activity, smoking cessations, and weight management. Regular risk factor assessment every three to six months. Glycemic control, first line, if GFR more than 30, this is metformin. And second line, if GFR more than 20, that is sodium glucose co-transport two inhibitor. Regarding management of the glycemic control, it is recommended that the HbA1c is 7% or less in all patients with type 1 or type 2 diabetes. All patients with uh, diabetic nephropathy have cardiovascular risk factor. So lipid lowering drugs with atrovastatin or simvastatin, fluvastatin should be started. If the patient having renal failure, these drugs are uh, safely started because they have no need to dose reduction dose reduction in case of GFR
in case of hypertension management diabetes with ckd blood pressure target should be 125 to uh, 130 and less than 80 regarding management of the hypertension in diabetes with proteinuria ac inhibitor or ac inhibitor or arb should be started if the this should could not control the diabetes then dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker would be started patients with severely increased albuminuria or massive albuminuria non dihydropyridine cal uh, calcium channel blocker or diuretics may be added but never combined should ac inhibitor or arb with combined or combination of one of the drugs with renin inhibitor should be avoided there are several groups of ac inhibitor and arb all are the similar efficacy should be used with cautions with special considerations diabetes with diabetic nephropathy intractable edema is a factor to manage it there is a study uh, published in 2015 uh, use of dapagliflozin to reduce the edema in patients of hospitalized patient. This slide shows that patient was started with oral furosemide and injectable furosemide, but there is no improvement of diuresis. But on the day uh, the SGLD2 inhibitor was started, then the diuresis was started and after 11 days that is weight loss with diuresis and also that is urine output also increase that is after started of SGLD2 inhibitors and weight is reduced serum creatinine baseline serum creatinine is also mildly increased but stable and urine output is also increased and weight is also reduced it can be used as a volume overload in a patient of diabetic uh, nephrotic syndrome another uh, study is uh, published in 2019 same used as a renin angiotensin system inhibitors this causing urinary glucose excretion with urinary sodium excretion decrease excess cellular volume and also body weight and blood pressure reduction so these drugs may also use as a uh, not only but uh, in glucose lowering but also in volume reduction and weight reduction effect of sglt 2 inhibitor on kidney disease progression there are Meta analysis of 13 trials of so were 90,000 participants, namely as Credence, DAPA, CKD, and IMPA, CKD, IMPA kidney trials. All uh, results is reduced rate of kidney disease progression regardless whether the patient had diabetes. So, patient with severely increased albuminuria, absolute benefit of SGLT2 inhibitor therapy is greater among those with higher level of albuminuria despite similar risk factors. Now, mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist in albuminuric CKD. Activation of mineralocorticoid receptor is associated with cardiovascular or kidney disease, putatively by stimulating the inflammatory and fibrotic cascade. Steroidal uh, MRA, is, uh, such as pinelotrose, was tried with but they have they should uh, they are associated with hyperkalemia non steroidal miracle receptor antagonist phenylalanine also reduce the albuminuria has a similar effect on serum potassium so the disease, uh, these drugs can be used in diabetic ckd to reduce the progression there are two large trials fidelio dkd and also figaro dkd and also that is a, that also a pooled analysis of these two trials fidelity pooled analysis both trials uh, significantly indicate that uh, they are non-significantly 
reduce the all cause mortality so we can use the phenylalanine in patient with massive albuminuria when the patient on angiotensin receptor blocker or inhibitor combined with sglt2 inhibitor despite the use of the two drugs persistence of the albuminuria then this uh, phenylalanine can be used now glucagon like peptide one receptor antagonist showed the slow rate of decline in gfr and prevent the worsening of albuminuria if the initial glucose therapy glucose lowering therapy is ineffective and patient is on sglt2 inhibitor glp1 uh, agonist may be used to reduce the by maintain the blood glucose level so kedigo executive summary 2022 and american diabetic association combinedly preliminary reports suggested that diabetic kidney disease management with albuminuria especially combined with erinine angiotensin system inhibitors metformin sodium glucose cortisol 2 inhibitors glucagon like peptides and a non steroid mercogic receptor antagonist now the management of the edema in severely increased albuminuria in patient of diabetes as you all normal management of the other nephrotic patient dietary sodium restriction 2 g per day and diuretics can be used first level is loop diuretics furosemide and torosemide and bimetronide if the loop diuretics is not works at all if the patient is hypokalemic spironolactone may be added uh, if the patient is normokalemia or hyperkalemia may be thiazide like diuretics metolazan clorthalidone or indepamide or thiazide type diuretic hydrochlorothiazide may be added to block the distal tubule and counteract the uh, electrolyte imbalance and also improve the diuresis these are the all diuretics used in uh, edematous state of nephrotic syndrome patient with severe hypoalbuminemia with plasma mean less than 2 albumin infusion sometimes advocated but after adbu- uh, after addition of the albumin on a sodium excretion through u- urinary sodium excretion should be monitored if there is no recognizable increase of sodium excretion on urinary then sodium albumin infusion should not be continue a variety of factors can account for persistent sodium and water retention spare without uh, typical use of the diuretics with inadequate diuretic dose decreased uh, intestinal absorption of oral diuretics decreased diuretic secretion in the tubular fluid increased sodium reabsorption at the sites nephron other than the other diuretics excessive sodium intake these are all discussed earlier patient unresponsive to intravenous diuretics and sometimes albumin what then we can do we may use ultra filtration slow continuous ultra filtration or continuous venovenous ultra fil- hemofiltration kidney replacement therapy is generally reserved for patients with substantial cardiorenal dysfunction who require concomitant dialysis or in patients control in clinical trial this is an unusual situation with associated with uh, cardiac failure now uh, the progression or regression of albuminuria factors uh, favoring the progression or albu- albuminuria is better management of glycemic control blood glucose and other uh, blood uh, lipid profile management in a study of 397 patients of type uh, 2 diabetes mellitus 20% have regressed to the normal level of albumin excretion and 19% experience progression to severely increased albuminuria so when a patient uh, presents with severely increased albuminuria As, uh, as a part uh, nephrotic syndrome so he or she may be regression uh, with adequate control and adequate medications monitoring the severely increased albuminuria we, uh, every 3 to 6 months we should monitor the 
volume status, blood pressure, EGFR, serum potassium, SB one c and elevation of the serum alumin, uh, evaluation of the serum alumin or total protein excretion, usually random ACR. A referral to patients with diabetic kidney, uh, kidneys to a specialist nephrology, especially when advanced CKD, heavy albuminuria, resistant hypertension, evidence of an inflammatory kidney disease that is hematuria or sterile pyuria and difficult to manage complications that is hyperkalemia or anemia. When we suspect a case of uh, diabetic disease with a non-diabetic kidney disease, severely elevated albuminuria, red blood cell cast, dysmorphic RBC, presence of other systemic disease and sudden rise of albuminuria, sudden development of nephrotic syndrome or rapid decline of estimated GFR. We should suspect the case with a diabetic patient having a non-diabetic kidney disease that is primary glomerular disease or other diseases. Uh, in 2013, there is a uh, report with uh, kidney biopsy with a diabetic patient. 61 biopsy patient, then one fourth of them are diabetic patient. One third of the diabetic patient have his diabetic glomeropathy, one third having diabetic glomeropathy plus non-diabetic kidney disease and one third having non-diabetic kidney disease alone. What are the non-diabetic kidney disease? Acute tubular necrosis, immune related glomerular disease, hypertensive nephrosclerosis and focus segment of glomerular sclerosis. Now, exp my experience share with uh, Bogura Shoji Orhan Medical College, renal biopsy finding of diabetic patients. We performed renal biopsy at Medical College Hospital. Total number of patients was 34. About 34 patients, 12 patients was reported as a case of diabetic glomerulosclerosis, that is 35%. Six patients having uh, non-diabetic kidney disease coexisting with diabetic glomerulosclerosis, that is 18%. Then our acute interstitial nephritis, messenger proliferative glomerular nephritis 1, C1Q nephropathy, SLE and PIGN. And 47% of the total biopsy patient having non-diabetic kidney disease. What are the di differentials? They are the, all are the primary glomerular diseases. Now, a patient with diabetes with nephrotic syndrome, one of the 34 patients, Mrs. Nasrin Akhtar, 44 years is, diabetes for four years and hypertension for two years, recurrent leg and body swelling for six months. She was on hypoglycemic as in glimepride and linagliptin and antihypertensive, only certain with hydrochlorothiazine and bisoprolol and lipid lowering drugs. For her swelling, she is taking frosamide and spironolactone. On examination, she is mildly anemic and moderately edematous. Blood pressure 170 and 90 with, anti with those antihypertensive. And on other systemic examination, otherwise normal except ascites. Investigation findings means albumin. 3 plus, RBC 6 to 8, granular and hyaline cast present, serum creatine 1.4, serum albumin 1.8, and serum total protein 4.2. 24 unit total protein is 10 gram per 24 hours. She is uh, recently diagnosed with a case of uh, hypothyroidism. TSS was 14. Random blood sugar is 8. Ultrasonal abdomen is moderate ascites with mild bilateral proliferation. Cardiac function reverse ECG is normal. And provisional diagnosis is diabetes, hypertension, hypothyroidism with nephrotic syndrome. We have facilities to retinopathy skin in every hospital. She had uh, diabetic retinopathy with maculopathy was found in both eyes. Um, serology was, screening was done uh, as patient is female, ANA, anti-DS, DNA, C, ANCA, P, ANCA, C3, C4, all is normal and viral markers are also normal. Renal biopsy was done in 26 January 2022. Bio diagnosis was membranous glomerulopathy stage 2. For confirmation of as a patient with a diabetic, we performed the phospholipase A2 receptor antibody quantitative. It was also positive, 438. Reference value is more than 20. These are the renal biopsy reports. Uh, this is the membranous glomerulopathy stage 2. These are the phospholase A2 receptor antibody. It was done from outside Bangladesh. She received Ponticilli, cyclophosphamide based regimen, and other supportive measures. After receiving therapy, 
Phospholipase A2 receptor antibody was negative, less than two, after six months. On follow-up visit, urine albumin 2 plus, serum albumin 3.7, normal renal function, UPCR is 2.8, and also oral uh, thyroid replacement therapy was TSS is normal. So final diagnosis is diabetes mellitus with membranous nephropathy with hypothyroidism. So take home message, diabetic nephropathy is a long-standing complication of diabetes mellitus. Severely increased albuminuria, proteinuria, even nephrotic range, increased risk of manifold progress to ESKD and cardiovascular complications. Early interventions with appropriate therapy may slow or even regression of the albuminuria. Presence of non-diabetic kidneys is kept in mind in an unusual presentation in diabetes mellitus. Thank you. Thank you for patience. Thank you, sir, for your nice and elaborative and informative presentation. Now, I'd like to request our two speakers, please come on dice to receive your crest. First speaker, uh, Dr. A.S.M. Inamul Kurin, sir, and second speaker, Dr. Yes, and second speaker, Dr. Shudhan Shukumar Shah, please come on dice. 